Hello everyone, welcome to Voices of the Vessel. I'm Shelby, the Director of Marketing for the Badger, the Lake Michigan Car Ferry. This podcast is dedicated to highlighting the people and voices from over the years who have made the Badger what she is today, as she is celebrating 70 years of service. This podcast is brought to you in partnership with Pier Ludington and Visit Manitowoc, our wonderful port cities. Thank you all for joining in today. I am very excited to include our wonderful port cities on today's show. And, you know, I often say that I feel so fortunate to have two great cities and states to market. And we have wonderful partners on both sides who are ready and eager to welcome our passengers in. And so today I am joined with Courtney Hansen and Brandy Miller, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Sure. Uh, Hi, I'm Courtney Hansen. I'm the Director of Tourism for Visit Manitowoc. And I'm Brandi Miller. I'm the Executive Director for the Ludington Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Wonderful. And you guys both have been just so wonderful to work with that I'm excited to tell more passengers like what we do in our port cities and just how amazing that, you know, it's so cool to say the Badger is celebrating 70 years of service. And, you know, the boat is amazing, but we really have to give a lot of credit to our port cities as well, because, you know, the Badger is a destination in and of itself, but it's getting to the port cities, I think is, you know, the big portion for most of our passengers. And what I think is really cool, you know, to note is that Ludington has been the home port of the Badger since 1953. Um, She used to sail into Kiwani and Milwaukee, Wisconsin as well. But today we just sail into Manitowoc, which I would be a little partial, but Manitowoc (laughs) is pretty cool place to sail into. Um, But there's so many connections between um, Ludington and Manitowoc that growing up in Ludington and the older I get, and especially through my job of just like how many ways that we've tied together. And, you know, especially back in the day when the Badger sailed year round, like so many people would move to Manitowoc um, from Ludington or vice versa. But what is really cool too in our more recent history is that the Badger is a continuation of U.S. Highway 10. So you can literally get on U.S. 10 in Bay City, Michigan, come across the state of Michigan to Ludington, get on the Badger and sail across to Manitowoc and then keep going all the way to Fargo, North Dakota. Um, So it's, you know, obviously tourism is a lot of what we talk about, but that transportation too, that we just, we literally and physically like connect the cities in a lot of fun ways that, um, Courtney, how about we start with you of like, just let's talk a little bit about Manitowoc and what is Manitowoc known for? Yeah, so we're a city that's just over 150 years old. Uh, We had our 150th birthday in 2020. um, And we, along with the SS Badger, just have so much maritime history tied into our community. Uh, We used to be a big shipbuilding community and actually still have some of that today in our industry with Burger Boat, creating some really beautiful... um, very nice and delightful looking. Uh, what is the word I'm thinking of? Yachts. Um, I don't typically, oh, cool. you know, use that word in my vocabulary every day, but uh, <laughs> they are there. Um, and recently, actually, in December, we were designated an American World War II heritage city for our citizens and industry support during the war. Um, in addition to meet war bonds and just really the way the community rallied behind that effort. Uh, We, industries that were really involved, uh, one of them that shipbuilding turned into submarine building and we had 28 submarines that were created here in Manitowoc. And we actually have, it's not one of them that was created, but it follows the exact same plans uh, in the Manitowoc River, the USS Cobia uh, that visitors can see right when they actually enter the city of Manitowoc aboard the car ferry. And it's just a very short walk away that you can go to the Wisconsin Maritime Museum and learn all about our history, our shipbuilding history, and then take a tour aboard the USS Cobia as well. So and I've done the tour. It's so fascinating. It's so, so fun. fun. And what I think is really cool too is you can sleep out there too. Yes, it's on Airbnb. So for years, scouts have been out on it doing trips. Um aboard the, 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 the submarine, um, but you can definitely hit up Airbnb and take a take a slumber aboard 
um, a few of the different spots in there. Um, but yeah, definitely check it out. Every time I go on uh, a tour of the submarine in the day, I haven't slept on it yet, but it's on my list. Um, I learned something new. So whenever we have a group that I'm taking along with or um, just someone that we're bringing along inside, it is so cool. So highly recommend you check it out if you're in Manitowoc. That's awesome. And and I often forget that Manitowoc just celebrated 150 years and oh, kind of a good segue for Brandy that Ludington is celebrating 150 yeah. years too. Like what a crazy coincidence. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This year is the Ludington sesquicentennial. So there's um, a year round celebration of events that are planned and um, just recently was the official anniversary. So that kind of kicked things off for the year. That's wonderful. And if you want to talk a little bit more about like what Ludington is known for and these celebrations that are going on, it's what a fun year in general. Like I'm just so excited for this year. Yeah, it, it, I, there's a lot on the calendar to celebrate and mark the, the historic anniversary. So we're excited about that. You know, as we've kind of talked about the anniversary, you know, in our community coming from really heavy industry and a really strong lumber background, you know, we've long been a travel destination on the shore of Lake Michigan. And so um, the thing that I hear most other than the Badger kind of being the one thing that everyone's like, I've been to Lettington, I've ridden on the Badger. Um, Our beaches and our natural resources for recreation continue to be the reason why people come to Lettington. Um, and really what we're best known for the, you know, our, we have expansive beaches along Lake Michigan, 28 miles along the shoreline um, and offer people a lot of different amenities, if any amenities, depending on what kind of experience they want to have on the water. And I think, um, you know, with our Ludington State Park, which is one of the top state parks in Michigan, that is a huge draw to our area as well. But we really kind of consider Ludington to be kind of the quintessential up north vacation. So you can kind of have the woods and water experience. Um, and certainly, um, you know, with all that's happening in a vibrant downtown, really um, take advantage just some of those amenities as well. No, that is so perfectly said. And I'm glad you mentioned kind of the lumbering beginnings, because when we talk about the history of the Badger and the car ferries in general, back in the 1930s, Ludington was the largest car ferry port in the world, which I think is just so crazy to think about. And so, you know, Ludington is kind of formed as that lumbering town, which brought the railroad, which then brought the car ferry. And in my job, what I do at the Badger, I'm learning something brand new every day. Um, mm-hmm. And it's very fun. And I actually recently learned about some connections between Ludington and Manitowoc of how they would ship some lumber across to Manitowoc for um, different like cabinet building. And yep. I'm always on the lookout for new and in- interesting little facts like that. But there's like the Hamilton wood type right outside of Manitowoc and there's some ties of I went to the museum and they talked about like oh yeah getting like lumber from the east I'm thinking like you could have said Ludington Michigan yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> you know those <laughs> random little things that maybe I'm the only person who will geek out about it but what a cool story of like and especially when you look at how Ludington was built in Manitowoc of some of those like cabinet building companies are close to our dock because it just made mm-hmm. sense back in those days and yeah just so many fun connections that I would love to hear what is the each of your favorite things about your city <sighs> I think one of them, yes it, it's cheesy but I think it's also just, so it's it's just the fact that we live on the beautiful shores of Lake Michigan I think we take it for granted because every single day, I mean, our office looks over the river and the lake. We can see now the badger come in once the season kicks off. And I forget how cool and beautiful and just fabulous that is until I have a friend or we're hosting some, um, some visitors, we're doing a group tour. And that is what they're just ogling over the fact that it's so big to them that it looks like an ocean. Yes, because yeah. there's use of like man-made kind of lakes typically from where they are or an ocean. So definitely just the beautiful, beautiful lake that we are treated to every single day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll come up with something else because I think that both can <laughs> that be the same thing. <laughs> but I will third that. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and on that, I mean, I feel like, um, you know 
our area is so known for tourism, but I think the fact that our community has been able to maintain like this authentic small town charm that people really appreciate, I think is still my favorite thing. It doesn't feel like we've overgrown. It doesn't feel like we're overexposed and, you know, over tourism is not present here. So I feel like you still can have this like very authentic experience as a visitor here that is, you know, still something to be enjoyed and you're not feeling like you're overrun when you're here. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that's still that we've been able to kind of maintain, maintain that authenticity and and that small town charm. Well, I think that is such a great point. And I mean, just when you talk about like the small town charm in the views of Lake Michigan that I know when we talk to, when I talk to a lot of our passengers, they kind of say that's one of the reasons they like sailing with us so that I myself have gotten into like polite arguments with people of like, oh, the nicest people come from Michigan. Oh no, the nicest people come from Wisconsin. <laughs> that both cities have that authenticity to them that I so appreciate having great partners who make it easy to say that. But it's like people are always, I think, so surprised at what each town has to offer. And yeah. just like, wow, like I can go on a submarine in Manitowoc. I can have like authentic ice cream and um um, you know, the state park in Ludington that it's always so fun to see. Cause what do you think surprises people the most about your cities? I think in the last few years, it's been, especially after we had quite a few passengers this past year, uh, even, you know, the year before that come over since COVID maybe for the first time, or there were more just domestic trips in general that a lot of people were taking. Um, it was just the fact that if they had been to manage walk before that so much has changed in the last five, 10 years, our downtown has really developed uh, in a way that is really vibrant. There's so much going on along the waterfront from new restaurants and um, wine bars, Uh, live music, uh, just even our attractions taking advantage of the lakefront they have and really highlighting events and uh, fun outdoor events they just didn't have before. So uh, definitely for anyone listening, if you have not been to Manitowoc in a few years, come on back aboard the Badger because we have a lot more to offer than we did before. That's awesome. Perfectly said. Yeah. Yeah. And I keep up on what's going on in that side lake because we get a lot of questions here too about, Mm -hmm. hey, I'm coming to Ludington. I'm taking the Badger. What can I expect when I get over there? And so I always like to keep tabs on what's going on. So on your social media pages, it's fun to see those new spots and restaurants and restaurants and, you know, all those little spots. So yeah, that's been fun to see all those additions. So Mm -hmm. yeah. I would say for our our side of the lake, I think the thing that surprises people the most um, is just like our cultural assets, I think really surprise people, Um, you know, between our um, sculpture park and the sculpture trail that we have running throughout the community, the lumber heritage trail our maritime trail and the technology that goes along with those. I always hear a lot of compliments about how I had no idea how rich like your cultural assets are here. And that's everything from like our art fairs to our open air concerts in the summer. But, you know, some of those assets that we've really spent time developing, I think are surprising because for a lot of people, they think, oh, it's just a small town. They probably, you know, it's cute and all of that. But there really is a lot much deeper history and an art scene here than um, I think people are shocked to learn a lot about. So yeah, those sculptures when I went over last summer for the first time so glad I did I cannot wait to come back this summer Uh, but the sculptures were so cool I was not expecting to see like you said that much art it was awesome yeah Mm -hmm. yeah it's very fun and we have so many you know fun and unique things on both sides of the lake I think people are always surprised at like I can do this or I can do that, that I know you both have some fun things going on. Brandy kind of mentioned 150th and I know Courtney, you guys are working on some new stuff. So what are some new events that people can look forward to this year? Uh, This year, we have a brand new waterfront event coming to Manitowoc, uh, July 14th, 15th, and 16th. Uh, We have the Wisconsin Sand Sculpting Festival, which is the only one of its kind here in the state. Uh, We will have some uh, sand sculptors come in from around the country. Uh, We might have one from actually overseas coming. 
and oh. they will be, I know I'm really excited. Uh, they'll be over the course of those three days, making some massive sand sculptures uh, along Red Arrow Beach. Uh, we're so excited for this entire event to really take advantage for the first time in a number of years, um, our beach and just have thousands of people come on down to, to Manitowoc to check this out, see all of our this beautiful lakefront activity for the weekend. There'll be food trucks. There'll be um, musical entertainment. There'll be so many fun things to check out in addition to the sand sculptures. And I mean, you can talk to the, the sculptors. Um, there'll be different demonstrations, um, lessons that you can take a part of too. So it's super interactive, uh, but really excited to see what they come up with. Some of the photos from their past events are incredible. There's this one I keep sharing in all of our marketing that is a massive sloth out of sand. So, it's so cool. So I can't wait to see what they come up with. Um, we're working on the theme right now, which will be, I'm sure, really fun. That is so cool. I am so excited that, I mean, and we've have so much sand in Ludington that I am have seen some really cool sand sculptures that I'm so excited to go over to Wisconsin and just see like what like what beauties are created because I know it'll be really cool. I hope so. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So on the 150th, that's really like our new fun thing happening this year. We're really fully embracing marking that uh, anniversary for our city. And um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a number of events throughout the year that we're planning to kind of mark that Um in addition to a lot of things that are happening in May and June around that, um, kind of the, the next big culmination of celebration is Love Ludington Weekend, which is kind of our kickoff to summer. Um, we've done this uh, a number of years, but um, since COVID, it really hasn't existed in this kind of form. So we're excited to be bringing that back all under the auspice of the 150th. And really, um, we're going to kick that off with a street party happening on Friday night. So the streets of downtown Ludington will fill in with thousands of people. We'll have uh, one main stage with uh, the number one California dance band. Uh, Pop Vinyl will be back in Ludington. They were here a few years ago as part of West Shore Banks Rhythm and Dune series. So and we're they were excited. so good live too. Like know, that was so fun. So fun. And that's what we wanted. We wanted a, a, a entertainer headliner for that, for the main stage, really to like bring a party to downtown. You know, this is going to have a little bit of a nod to Friday Night Live um, with the, the whole street party downtown. But um, yeah, we're really looking forward to just bringing people back to downtown for that. Um, and we're looking for uh, uh, other ways to incorporate, you know, our local community and our charities and nonprofits too into that event, just as we always did when it was Friday Night Live. Also that weekend is the Lake Stride Half Marathon 10K and 5K again, always that same weekend. So um, that's uh, I don't run. I'm not a runner, but um, I know it's a I try to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I know that's like one of the highest compliments of that, uh, that race is just the beautiful scenery and the way that that is put together. So, and they just um, got an award, like one of the top 30 in the country, most scenic routes. So um, it's pretty cool that we've got that right here. And then um, part of the weekend is marking a couple other big anniversaries. I know the Badger celebrating 70 years and you guys are going to mark that with something. Um, House of Flavors, another really big kind of iconic business in Ludington marks 75 years this year as well. So they are um, that weekend also going to be attempting to make a Guinness, uh, break another Guinness World Record. So we'll be oh cool. Yeah, so visitors can come take part in that, um, which has been a couple of years in the making of attempting to break another one of those. And then, um, you know, we'll have historic home tours, b, &B tours, other must-see and do things that weekend. Um, people can go putt-putt down at the JC's Mini Golf, down at Stearns Park Beach. You'll get a commemorative golf ball. They're doing a uh, play for $1.50 and nod to the 150 oh, so, oh. yeah, so I think everybody's really embracing that as kind of, again, the kickoff to summer and really, really celebrating Ludington's 150th anniversary. So on top of that, there'll be clown band concerts, there'll be um, cemetery walks, historic tours, um, 
and a sesquicentennial ball in the fall. So um, we're really looking forward to, to kind of marking that all throughout 2023. So many fun things. Like I am so excited. And like you mentioned, the Badger, we will be doing a Badger birthday bash, um, birthday party. And it's just so many fun things that I'm just so excited to like get the year kicked off. But it's like, I think this is a great time to mention the Badger mini cruise special that we have going on where basically you can depart and return within a 40 hour time frame, and it's only $70 and what a perfect chance to go across the lake, but check out the other city and just mark all of these fun events. And in like Courtney had said, if you haven't been to Manitowoc in a while, this is a great time to come visit. Ludington has so many fun things going on um, that you can do at any time of our season. Um, you know, it's not just weekends. If someone's looking for something fun to do on a Thursday or Tuesday, you know, we can help get them there. But there's so many fun things to do in both cities within walking distance. I think that's kind of going back to the authenticity of both cities is that you know, it both cities and Manitowoc is actually a lot larger than Ludington, but still it has that small town charm feel that I don't know if you guys have any specific recommendations or things that you would say are must see within walking distance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a couple that come to mind food, um, I must be hungry, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> it's a really short walk. Uh, we have the wharf, which is a pretty new in the last few years venue. Uh, They're open during the sailing season, seven days a week. Um, So it's always a really great location. Even if we have people just, you know, kind of come over and then go back to Ludington right away, just after a couple hours, we recommend they grab a bite to eat or a drink at the wharf. Um, They have great drinks. It looks over the river. You can see the badger come in. Um, Another one, uh, the Fat Seagulls, another restaurant that's just... um, Mm -hmm about half a block up. Um, They're also open seven days a week, which is really great. And they have some of those classic Wisconsin items, cheese curds, some really good fish. Uh, They have really good fish tacos all the time. So uh, definitely a couple of places to check out within walking distance. And we do also, it's not necessarily, you know, somewhere to eat, have fun, but our closest hotel, the Inn on Maritime Bay actually just returned to its name, the Inn on Maritime Bay, and have gone through a four by four renovation. So that is a really exciting stay for this summer if anyone is looking for a close to the dock um, location for for slumbering between all of your activities that you're going to be doing (laughs) in and around Manitowoc. No, that is great because, and I mean, I have not had to rely on public transit in Manitowoc, but I hear it's great, but there's so many different things because I know so many people love to sail across and go to Bernstein's, the candy oh, yes. store. Yes. And, and there's lots of, yes, including <laughs> me. Like I, that's like one of my first stops whenever I have so many reasons to get back to Manitowoc and just have fun and like see people again. But I cannot wait. Like, it seems like every time I come to Wisconsin, like my family is like, okay, what did you bring us back? Cheese curds or candy? And it's like, <laughs> like I can only hit up so many places in a day, but I do look forward to the candy store very that's much. <laughs> definitely a must hit up. And I love, there's been so many times when I've been in there uh, that we'll have someone in a lot of times it's around, you know, the, the noon sale when it comes in, I uh, get off mm-hmm. the badger and come into Bernstein's and the first thing they say when they walk in is like, wow, I just stepped back yeah. in time because it has that old candy ice cream parlor feel, all the dark wood. It really does feel like you went back in time, but that reminds me, I need to go and pick up some candy for myself. Love their good <laughs> candy. It's been a few weeks. <laughs> I can't say I don't blame you. <laughs> I've been there as well. That's one of my like early memories of like taking the car ferry over. So I do remember that place. Oh. It's that. <laughs> Um, I think walkable, I think that's one of the things that I love about people who come off the Badger is like they can access so much just within it, like within a mile or a mile and a half mm-hmm. just walking from the dock. Um, 
you know, when you get off the car ferry, you're kind of on the south side of downtown. But as you travel up South James Street, um, one of the things that most people probably are looking for when they get off is a place to eat or to grab mm-hmm. a beer. So both of our <laughs> breweries are um, are right there. Lettington Bay Brewing, you'll hit first as you come off the dock. Great spot. Um, you know, they're, I think they just celebrated five years, I think. Um, yeah, I think open. so. Just so and, cool. And it's a beautiful building. Yeah, beautiful spot. They've got an awesome patio, um, good spot to grab food. Um, and they've got a really unique menu and then obviously some great beer. And then up the next block is James Port Brewing Company, another kind of mainstay in downtown. They just celebrated a big anniversary as well. Um and they have a beautiful deck overlooking the harbor. So mm-hmm. um, you know, get a get a, a great view of the marina and the harbor and the boat as it's docked there, which is great. And really, South James Street has become such a, a nice like hub for so many great restaurants and drinking Definitely. spots. Um, and I, I think that's, you know. A good good starting spot in downtown. Certainly the beach and waterfront park are all within walkable distance, but both have great amenities, whether you're looking for a playground, the sculpture park that we talked about earlier. Down when you get down to Stearns Park Beach, there's the skate park, mini golf, the playground again, the lighthouse that you can walk out to and the beach. So um, all within good walking distance. And even some of our main attractions all within there too, you know, Sandcastles Children's Museum. If you're coming with with little ones, it's a great spot to check out. Oh, definitely. Yeah, the Maritime Museum as well. Um, now with the Historic Research Center right downtown as well, uh, you can get a feel for what to experience out at White Pine Village and the Sports Hall of Fame. Um, and then, you know, I think about downtown and in general, there's always weekly events happening. So, you know, our weekly farmer's market, we've got a live music series every week throughout the summer, most pretty much the entire sailing season. Yeah. Um, live music in the plaza. So, um, yeah, I think about all those things as, you know, people within walking distance of downtown that people can easily check out um, whether they're here for a long weekend or even just an afternoon or a day and turn around and take advantage of that mini cruise. So, yeah. Definitely. And I so appreciate that both cities have so much to offer because it's always like kind of like the best and worst question when people are like, well, what do you recommend on both sides? And it's like, yeah. how long do you want to talk? Like, <laughs> yeah. it especially like you both hit on so many good restaurants in the area within walking distance where it's like, I feel like every time I go across to Wisconsin, like I eat so well. And then when people are like, oh, you're from Ludington, like, where would you recommend to eat? And it's like, oh gosh, like how much like do you want to eat? Criteria. How much? Yeah, like I need some criteria because it there's just so many good places that I just appreciate the work that you both do because it makes it so easy that we're so excited to offer the mini cruise. And I just want people to know, like in a completely unbiased opinion that both cities have so much going on that it'll be such a great summer. And, um, and Brandy, you kind of talked a little bit about like your memories of the candy store, but it's like, I know you both, you and you both, and if I, you both are native to your cities you represent, correct? Yeah. 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 Which is pretty cool. I just thought of that. And so I would love to hear more about like your first memory of the car ferry. Like when you first sailed and like what you remember the most, because I know Courtney, you just sailed for the first time. Yeah. I didn't sail until this past summer, but I mean, I always remember the car ferry growing up. We would go to the library, which is, you can see the, the boat come in from the children's mm-hmm. section. So we would always go around lunchtime and you would just hear it. You'd run to the window and just watch it back up. And I mean, I always remember that being a huge part, but yeah, we sailed last year. I went with a group from the city in July. It was fabulous. Um, so much fun aboard. I don't know why until this past year when I really got into this role and talked to Shelby and got ready to you know, go myself and just telling people what is aboard the boat, uh, reading like right. the crossings magazine, all of that. I didn't realize how much there was to do, um, from food and drinks and the boutique and the museum. There's just so much to go and explore that four hours goes by so fast. Um, I didn't even have a chance to play badger bingo yet. So that's in my list. <laughs> oh, what? This. 
I know. I was just okay. That is like top agenda item. I think I was just like going, going, going on the way there. And on the way Mm -hmm. back, I found a seat on, I don't remember if it was the front or the back. And I just laid in the the lounge chair and fell asleep in the sun. And it was the most fabulous thing. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's so funny how many people like are so quick to tell me. And I mean, I am guilty of this as well of like, they take their best naps on board. And I remember when you sailed and you came up to me and you were like, this is so cool. Like what took me so long? And it, for me, it's always kind of special to like, I think, especially growing up in Ludington and now working here of how fortunate, you know, I am to ride often. It will, for me, it'll never get old of people's first impression of the boat and just how surprised they are of like, and I know when you came up to me, you were just like, oh my gosh, like water as far as the eye can see, just the yes. views. And I was so glad I got to experience that with you. <laughs> I was so glad you were on board. That was so awesome. That was, it was a great weekend. It was. It was so much fun. And I'm just glad that you had a great time. And in Brandy with you, and you've been in this role for a while. And I actually was going through some photos and found a photo of you on board that I'll have to send you. But I would Uh-oh. love to hear your first time on board or your first impression of the boat. Yeah, I just remember like as a really young child, I remember like being school, like really young school age. And, you know, there always is like I we would walk down to the dock to, for the maiden voyage. And we'd right. you know, along the, along the, the waterfront there. And so those are one of my like earlier memories. And I remember like driving down to the dock with my grandpa and like seeing the mm-hmm. boat and stuff like that. I don't remember like my exact first time, but I was really young when I rode and I know I've ridden with grandparents and aunts and my family and, um, then since have gone back and forth a number of times with my husband. We've brought friends from college across, like I've been across for work. So I don't even know how many times I've been on board, but um, some of the cool, like some of my like favorite memories of being on board. One of them is a trip we took across my husband and I, and we ended up riding back on the midnight sailing from Manitowoc. Oh, yeah. Brought sleeping bags and we slept on the on the front bow in the lo- mm-hmm. in the lounge chairs. And I've never seen like the sky so dark and the stars yeah. so bright. You're in the middle of the lake. It was amazing. Like I was so grateful to have had like that little tip of like, no, if you can hang on and ride through the night, like do that. So um How cool no, you got so many that. Yeah, it's so many cool experiences on board. All the amenities as, you know, a kid were so fun. Badger bingo is like, you know, a must do. That's why I'm shocked that, that <laughs> Courtney, you didn't do that. That's like the number no, one. I was moving. I was actually on board with one of my staff members and she was like there solid the entire four hours. But yeah, not me. I've done yeah. bingo. I've done karaoke. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've done it all. <laughs> I love the boat. Yeah. My memories run back a long time, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty special boat in my mind. And having been part of the save our ship campaign about 10 years ago, we did a lot on board there. And so, um, just like reinvigorated my love for the boat. So that's so cool. And and especially, you know, with that, and I'm sure Brandy, you can, we can attest to like the same thing of just like that local connection of like sharing a hometown with the Badger, but yeah. it's so cool of getting to share that with so many people, you know, in Manitowoc and beyond that. Um, yeah. Cause my next question is what is your favorite thing about the Badger? I know we've just kind of talked about that a little bit already, but you know, it's hard for me to say like what my favorite thing is. I'd love to hear what your guys' yeah. favorite thing is about the Badger. Oh, that is such a hard because there's so much yeah I mean I could go with the light answer of like I love the Bloody Mary bar that was added (laughs) or I could go with the really deep answer of like what it really means to our community so I'm all over the place on that question (laughs) which is fair I mean it does mean like for us when we it comes back and the sailing season really starts like it is summer it is the best of the year there's so much to do and there's just that sense of excitement when you hear the horn go off. Even if I'm at my house now on the weekend and I'm letting the dog out, we're both like, oh my God, yay, it's <laughs> noon. Uh, it just, yeah. It's special that we have this piece of history in both of our communities going back and forth every single day in the sailing season. 
Yeah. I know. I think about that, like the routine and like the tradition that when the car ferry is sailing, like I know so many, like that's their thing. Like they go and get an ice cream cone at House of Flavors and they make their way to somewhere along the water to watch the boat come in. And so I think just like that, like tradition of like continuing to like be mesmerized by it, I think is the coolest thing. Oh, definitely. And you definitely said it perfectly, Courtney, of like, it's kind of like the kickoff to summer and especially on the Ludington side. Like I have so many people who say to me, like the badger is the sound of summer. And we actually started offering like a download of the horn on our website because people are like, we miss it in the winter months. I love that so much. And I know it's so sweet. Like I will send you a link to the download because Thank it you. is very popular in in Ludington. A lot of like I've heard some people kind of argue over like what is like the official start of summer because some people it's when Dairy Queen opens, um, which is like yes. in March. And it's like a really big deal. And Brain yes. and I are laughing together right now because like people get like really upset about like the traffic and everything but then I've heard people say oh no it's when you start seeing the smoke coming out of the stack like yeah the badger like that is the start of summer like so for some people it's like first part of March with Dairy Queen and some people it's May when the badger starts and I just think what a funny thing and especially um and I have to laugh too you talk about like going home at noon to let your dog out and hearing the horn and like especially with my family and friends and such like you know, when you hear the, the horn at seven, when the boat comes in, like, um, my, you know, my female clients like, Oh, Hey, like, okay. So the boat's getting in, like, what time do you want dinner? Or like, there's so many (laughs) local things that just like revolve around that, that, um, one thing that I recently learned is that, well, in Ludington, they donated the horn from, the city of Midland to the local football team. And they use that for like touchdowns. I didn't realize that Manitowoc has a recording or something that last springtime or was it summer? Now I think about it. Um, they were testing out the horn at Oriole Field and I got a few phone calls of, hey, why are we hearing the horn right now? Like what's going on? Like from our local newspaper, local people, even like my parents were calling me of like, did I just hear the boat? Like what's going on? And it's like, sometimes you forget of how many people rely on that seven o'clock bell. And it's like, oh, I was just paying football attention. team testing it out. That it's just funny of like those little things that you sometimes you take for granted and how much they really mean to people. Cause in Brandy, you said it perfectly too, of getting the ice cream cone and watching the boat come in. Like that is such a Ludington staple. Like yeah. there's nothing more Ludington than getting house of flavors, ice cream and watching the badger come in. Yes. And we love that of, you know, people waving in the boat. And and I know that happens in Manitowoc as well, that it's always so humbling, especially for a lot of our crew members that live on board of having those people that, you know, just rely on her coming in every day that um, and kind of already answered my next question already, but I don't know if you had any more to add of what would you say the Badger means to your community? I mean, just in addition to what I had kind of mentioned before, uh, just that piece that yeah, it's summer and this big tourism kick is really coming. We have so many more people funneling in and out of our city during the sailing season and are so grateful that we are Port City for the Badger because of that. So all of our storefronts in downtown, our restaurants, I mean, everyone shifts hours. Uh, mm-hmm. There's just so many new things. And I mean, people are ready to go and ready to welcome everyone who who comes in from whether it be Ludington or wherever they're traveling from aboard the Badger. So definitely a lot of excitement in our downtown, especially. And we can definitely feel that excitement too of like people are so eager to say like, I've been watching her come in that it's finally my turn. And we're always eager to welcome those passengers on board. Yeah. Yeah. I think similarly, like there is always excitement as you were just explaining about just like when the Badger returns to sailing, it's just like that cyclical thing, like that is just Mm -hmm. such a staple in our everyday. I mean, I think the, the unsaid thing that we all, all really appreciate it's, it's such a big economic contributor to our community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Said, we're just so grateful to be a port city and, you know, to have 
hundreds of people step up, step off that boat every day who are dropped into our downtown is such an amazing gift. Um, but you're a large employer in our community and you give back. And for 70 years, that's an amazing contribution. So I think, you know, that's something that we're really proud of and grateful for is just the role you play in our community and in providing jobs and then, you know, what you also bring with your service too, to our community. So well, of course. And I mean, and you both do such a great job of, you know, making it easy to be here or too, of just having fun things going on. And, and it's funny too, when you talk about employment, like I, there's a lot of people like throughout the community and beyond that I've talked to that they're like, I can't wait to retire so I can go work on the boat. And it's <laughs> like, please, like we would love to have you, but it's so funny to me of the people who are like, I have like, oh yeah, my, my career is great, but I have seven more years till retirement. I'm looking forward to coming to work on the Badger and sail on a random Tuesday or something. And it's just always fun to see, you know, what those people are like once they come on board or even when they get off the ship too, of like, I'm finally here, I'm looking forward to visiting this place. And one thing too, is like, we have so many passengers who may have sailed with their grandparents who now bring their grandkids and are always so eager to like get on board and say, Oh, like years ago when we visited, um, we did this in Manitowoc and I can't wait to do that with my family. So just being that constant support and pillar in both um, communities, we're so appreciative of. Yeah. I was going to say that I think that whole like nostalgic piece of the mm -hmm. car and what it means to everyone. I mean, there's such sentimental value there for locals and people throughout the country who've traveled or traveled with a grandparent, traveled in, you know, early days or worked on the boat or had family who worked on the boat. So I think mm -hmm. that's a huge piece of what people appreciate. Definitely. I would definitely agree with that. And so, but yeah, and it's like, and it's so cool. I mean, we keep talking about the 70 years of service, but how does it feel to be a part of that legacy? Because, and I mean, in Ludington, we're celebrating a lot of different um, historical things this year, but it's like, you know, it's a, this is a perfect moment to kind of pause and be like, you know, this legacy has a wonderful storied 70 year history, but we have a great future ahead of us. So how does it feel to be a part of that? I can't think of a really great adjective because it's just such a <laughs> cool piece all the way around that we've had, I mean, maritime history over a hundred years going back for Manitowoc. Uh, we still have the Badger going today, which is amazing. Uh, and we just have so much to explore in Manitowoc, below Manitowoc with our shipwreck coast that was recently designated. There's just oh, so yeah. many cool ways to experience a little bit of our maritime history and just to have this living, breathing, still functioning piece of it today is just, it's very, very cool. And we're really lucky to be a part of it and really excited to continue to be a part of it for years to come. Yeah, yeah. that's absolutely that's awesome. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that too. I mean, it's like such a marked occasion that you're proud to be part of and to see live and in action, which is amazing. But I think it's even more exciting to think about like, what do the next years look like and what is the future and how do we get to sure. roll with that too? So that's all really exciting. But I think, you know, I, I personally, obviously with Ludington's 150th, I keep thinking about, you know, being part of this moment and like, how do I like, capture these things. So like in 50 years, like we can look back at where we were today. Mm -hmm. And so I keep thinking about that in reference to these other big anniversaries, you know, like making sure I'm part of the world record and, you know, come to the birthday bash for the 70th at the car ferry. And so like, I think that's the thing is like being present for these things means a lot for, you know, just where you are and it, but it feels good from our end to, to be able to be here and to celebrate alongside of you, but to also be thinking about what does the future hold too. So. No, definitely. I agree. And it's so cool. Like, you know, especially all of us being local to our areas and what we do that just to say, like, yeah, I get to be a part of this and look forward to a bright future that I know 2023 will be a wonderful year. And we're so excited to get our season underway and get people back across the lake and say, yes, come to Ludington. Yes, come to Manitowoc. You won't you won't be disappointed. I mean, both places are so fun that as much as I love Ludington, I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited to get back to Manitowoc and tell people, yes, you need to come visit, but you also need to come back to Ludington too and <laughs> check it out there. So it'll definitely be a wonderful year. And it's a perfect year, you know, with the mini cruise and just everything new that, um, and we talked a little bit about the new things 
coming on, but there's still so many great staples like Suds on the Shore and Sputnik Fest that um, I just thank you both so much for all the hard work that you do to make our port cities so amazing. Thank well, thank you. you for everything you do. Yes, thank you.